Okay, recording is on. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the class. Let's take a moment to pray and then we'll get started. Uh, could somebody please pray with the class and then we will keep going? Anyone? I can pray. Go ahead, Samuel. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives. We are eternally grateful to you. For you've not just created us, but you've called us for your purpose. You have built us. You are equipping us. Your grace is abounding in our lives. And you have convened us this day, this time, to learn uh, from your servant, uh, to learn from your word, to learn from your spirit. We commit ourselves, we commit this hour into your hands as we look into uh, Christian apologetics and uh, keys to supernatural ministry, we dedicate all three hours. We dedicate our lecturer, Pastor Ashish. We dedicate every class member. You know our lives. Um, you know you're with us. Um, you're building us. You're doing an amazing work in us. And we thank you, Father. As we learn, open our hearts, open our minds. Um, Give us spiritual understanding, knowledge, and wisdom so that we can soak in um, through your word, through your spirit. And uh, we can use what we're learning today. Um, we'll, we, these seeds that are planted today will bear fruits in the coming days for your kingdom and for your glory. This in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Let me just on this down a bit okay good morning everyone once again and welcome to the class so we are in this chapter on uh, understanding suffering um we're trying to develop a biblical understanding of uh, why there is suffering why there is pain and uh, why there is you know, there are a lot of these related questions, which often are actually unanswered. So we're trying to get a biblical understanding to this, and uh, it not—it's not necessarily going to <clears throat> answer everything, but it's going to give us a framework within which we can think and uh, process what we see around us, and. Uh, and not uh, again I, I, I need to say that not everybody else is going to be able to understand what we say but as long as they're open to you know looking at the scriptures with us and saying look this is what the bible is saying and then we do have an explanation uh, we do have a way to explain uh, some of the, the the evil the suffering the pain that we see around us um, I'm just going to quickly review what we covered last week, and uh, I think today, I'm sure within the two hours, uh, we, we should be able to co complete this chapter and then maybe even move on to uh, some of the things we, uh, other things that we want to cover in this course. So, <clears throat> biblical understanding of suffering, we began by saying, uh, let's understand God's heart in the light of his original intent. And it's very, very clear in scripture, both in the beginning of the Bible and at the end of the Bible, that suffering, pain, sorrows, tears, these were not part of God's plan, right? Uh, but it came in subsequently uh, because of the fall. But in the light of God's original intent, suffering is not what God designed. The pain, the suffering, the evil, these were not things God designed or intended for people. It came in later because of the fall, uh, man's disobedience, sin came in, and through death, uh, through sin, uh, death came entrance into the world. So we must be very careful before we attribute to God things that he never originally intended for the human race. Secondly, we recognize that suffering is a reality. People do, I mean, there is suffering. We're not denying it. We're not denying the pain and um, 
the wickedness and the evil and the hardship. You're not denying that. We also recognize that suffering happens in three realms. There is spiritual, emotional, physical. Uh, and almost always, these are interconnected. That uh, if we are able to deal with the root cause, which is in the spiritual, we can affect the emotional and physical. Now, sometimes it may be physical, just physical, like, you know, somebody may be having some sort of sick, you know, they are injured themselves or hurt themselves. But many times, right, these are interconnected, the spiritual, emotional, and physical. So from a biblical perspective, how do we understand suffering? What are the reasons for this? And this is what we started working our way through. First, we understood that there is suffering due to the bondage of corruption. Now, the bondage of corruption is just a phrase that we took from the King James and New King James Version of the Bible in Romans chapter 8, 17 to 23. And uh, in that passage, Paul helps us understand that, you know, God gave up creation, not willingly, meaning that was not part of his original plan, but he let it go in hope, that is in anticipation of what was to come, what he has already had in mind for the for all of creation, that is to redeem them out of this bondage of corruption. But right now, all of creation is in that state, in bondage or in subjection to corruption. Corruption means it's a decay or a deviation from the original design of uh, perfection and goodness that God intended or God ha had put in place. And so because it has deviated and, you know, and, and it has deviated so much from God's original design, we have all kinds of things happening. There's wickedness, there's evil. Uh, you know, whether, whether you look at natural elements like tsunamis, earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanoes, all of these things were not God's design for, for the earth. But it came in because of uh, subsequent to the fall. And similarly, you know, we can understand a lot of other things. Uh, like we mentioned, mm, children, you know, born with defects. I mean, the child didn't do anything. The child is, uh, is innocent, but yet it was born in deformed or something happened. And uh, it's definitely not the child's fault, but we understand it from <clears throat> this this, the fact that all of creation has been subject to corruption, that deviation, there's a deviation from God's original design. Secondly, we talked about suffering due to one's own action. You know, if if <clears throat> if we are not responsible, uh, we will face the consequences, and uh, uh, we cannot deny that. And we should not blame God, neither the devil, for the uh, suffering that comes because of our own. Uh, actions, uh, what we've done wrong. And then we talked about suffering due to satanic oppression, that it is true that Satan and, and, and his demons cause problems on the earth and they can attack anyone. They come against both believers and non-believers alike. And um, the intent is to steal, kill, and destroy. And um, they come against people of all ages. Doesn't matter whether it's a child or an elderly person. The, you know, the, the enemy uh, works against everyone. But for the believer, we have the grace. We have the weapons that God has given to us. We have. Uh, the authority that is vested in us. And so, you know, we can stand against the works of darkness and so on. And we also do have our own place of uh, responsibility in keeping the enemy out of our lives. So <clears throat> we mentioned some of these things. We discern by the Spirit what the enemy is trying to do. We exercise a God-given authority. And we stand and don't quit. And uh, and you know and of course we never we shouldn't blame God for what the devil's doing, 
and uh, and we need to do what God has instructed us to do, uh, to stand up against the works of the enemy, right? So uh, we we can live victoriously, and we must live with that sense of uh, uh, triumph over the works of darkness, right? So that's three things that we covered last week. Uh, I just want to pause here and see if there are any questions on these. Uh, I don't know if you've had uh, thoughts on it and any questions came up later on. Any questions on the first three points? Just a quick review. Okay, Anita, please go ahead. Pastor, uh, you said that uh, all the things uh, like what is happening in the world is the sub subsequent things. Like what God did not meant all of this. But uh, knowing that God is omniscient and uh, he knows everything in advance, he would have known, right, uh, like all these things would be subsequent, uh, things would be happening, whatever the Adam and Eve does. So then how can we say that, uh, that God did not intend it? Yeah. So uh, the answer is yes, God knew. You know, God knew that uh, uh, these things were going to happen. And that's why, you know, Paul wrote there in Romans 8.20, he gave it up, not willingly, but in hope. That means with the understand, with the expectation of what he was going to do in the future. So God knew it, uh, but he also had a plan of redemption. That means even before creation, Jesus was the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. So redemption was already, the, God's plan for redemption was already in place. So it didn't take him by surprise. He knew what he was going to do. Uh, was God aware that, you know, there would be so much of wickedness and so much of pain and suffering in the world? Yes. Um, was he willing to let the world go into all of this? Yes. Did he have a plan of redemption to recover and restore everything to a uh, original state? Yes. So none of this is taken by surprise. God knew it. And uh, he also had a plan to bring everything out of the state of uh, corruption. But the question is this. Can we attribute to God uh, what is happening today? And then the other question which you just posted is, um, what is God up to? You know, what's, what's, what's he up to uh, with all of this? So let's answer the first question, is, which is, can we attribute to God if you know, all the suffering that's happening here? You know, take a, you know, a, a, a simple example where you think about, and I'm just using this as an example, it's not about any individual. Think about the prime minister or the president of a country. Uh, generally speaking, the prime minister or the president of the country uh, wants or seeks the well-being of every person in the country. Right? They want everything to go well. I mean, they want the economy to do well. Uh, they want people's lives to be really good. They want prosperity in the land. They want uh, the country to you know, just keep doing really well. That's generally, I'm saying, you know, the, the heart of the leader, whether the prime minister or the president of a country. But do they know that in almost every city in their country, there is crime? Of course. Do they want crime to happen? No. Do they have things in place to prevent crime? Yes, the government does. But does crime still happen? Yes. Can we attribute to the prime minister or the president responsibility for the crime that's happening in the cities in the country? No. Why? Because to the best of what they can, the government is doing or has measures in place to prevent crime or to punish crime. 
but crime is still happening because there are people doing it. But we cannot blame every everything that happens in every city to the prime minister alone or the president alone, right? The president, the prime minister is not responsible for the action of the individual citizens who violate the rules uh, and the laws of the land. Each individual citizen is making a choice to do something and some of them are, doing, are, are, are taking action that actually violates the law of the land. Is the prime, can the prime minister be blamed for it? No. This is a simple example from our realm. So in the same sense, God is, you know, like you said, omnipotent, omniscient, uh, uh, and uh, omnipresent. But he's not responsible for our individual choices, right? Um, each one is making choice. Each one is choosing to do certain things. He has given to us as believers whatever we need spiritually to stand up against sin, against wickedness, against what Satan is doing. He's given those things to us. And so we must you know, use them uh, and to stand up against the evil. But we cannot attribute to God what is happening because of human choice. That's the first one. What is the you know what is the purpose behind all this, or how do we understand all this? You know, for us it looks really absurd that a God who is so powerful, who is all knowing, and who who knew everything, would still let the earth go through all of this. It it actually looks very absurd from our perspective. But remember, our perspective is a very finite perspective. You know, our time on earth, let's say, uh, at this point is, uh, you know, maybe 80 years, 90 years is typically an average lifespan at this point. That's our lifespan. So we are looking at it from a perspective of an 80 to 90 year, 90 year time span. Whereas God is looking at things from an eternal perspective, eternity, or actually beyond eternity. So for us, this 6,000 years is like, what a mess. For God, a thousand days, a thousand years is like a day. Why? Because he lives outside time. And yeah, for us, it is very ridiculous. Why would God let the earth go through so much in this 6,000 year period and, you know, and counting? When he is so powerful, he's so all knowing, he could have wrapped everything up uh, and, uh, you know, brought everything to a close, which he will. He has already told us, you know, you read Revelation. So look, there's going to be new heavens and the new earth. There's going to be a place but there'll be no more sorrow, no more tears, nothing. It's going to be perfect. And that's, that's, that's the expectation. And that's what's going to happen. But it's, in our, from our perspective, it's taking such a long time to get there. From God's perspective, it's like, hmm, it's very, very minute uh, time compared, or let's say from an outside time perspective. And what is he actually getting at? He's getting at having a people who will be his family and be part of his kingdom, but they will do it completely out of their own free will. Because that was his original intent, to have a family, and he created Adam and Eve, to have a people who would worship him, who would walk with him, who would live in his glory. And out of their own free will, they would serve him. And so through all of this, that's, that's happening. God is working that out. But people who are conformed to the image of his son. Yeah. So is that okay, Anita? I know you've put up something else. God is separating goats and sheep in all this process. Well, um, the sheep and the goats, Matthew 25, 
scenario is like the Great White Throne Judgment picture. And, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, does that address some of your questions or some of your thoughts? Any of them? Can I move on to Kennedy? Okay. Kennedy, yeah. what was your question? I think my question has been partly answered with Anita, but uh, I just wanted to get some clarity from you. So is aging suffering? Uh, aging itself is not suffering. Uh, Paul wrote in Second Corinthians 4, uh, um, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Uh, so did God design aging? No, it wasn't part of his plan. It came in because of the fall. So we do age and die physically. Death, physical death was not part of God's plan. But it doesn't have to be suffering. And, you know, like Job writes in Job 5, and I think it's verse 24, um, he says, you know, you will come to your grave as a full corn, as a sheaf of corn, and bow uh, as a sheaf of corn falls to the ground. Um, let me just give you the exact verse that I'm referring to. Um, Job 5, verse 26. Job 5, 26. So it says, you know, you'll come to your grave at a full age as a sheaf of grain ripens and in, uh, in its season. So really, uh, it, it, it wasn't God of, part of God's plan, but it doesn't have to be suffering. Uh, we are going to live out a full course, full course of our life, and uh, with God's help, uh, we can live well, live strong, live healthy, live, you know, uh, 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 live a fruitful life till the end. But then. Uh, I know, I know that, uh, I'm trying to see how to put it. We know that aging is a very painful process in many people's lives, right? I'm not denying that. Um, and uh, the elderly, in many, many cases we see around us, go through a lot of suffering. You know, there's all kinds of diseases that affect people in their latter day, latter stage of life. You know, it would be Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and um, all kinds of, <clears throat> sorry, all kinds of uh, dementia, and all kinds of things that happen as people get older. So what we see around us often is aging is actually a lot of suffering. But then we need to believe God in his word and say, God, uh, I know it's appointed to man wants to die. We have to die. And I know that the body is will decay. I mean, it, it's, it, the outward man will perish. But my inward man can be renewed every, every day. And we believe, we want to believe that God, until we die, we want to live strong, live well, and finish well. And that's, I think, the way a believer should uh, approach uh, aging. So, can I, I'm not sure if I answered your question. I was just saying something. I don't know if I really answered your question. Uh, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have some All understanding right. now. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Charles is saying, if aging is not God's plan, didn't God know that man was going to sin? And the council of heaven sat and Jesus Christ was died for sinners, was it after Adam had to <clears throat> had been created? Uh, so Charles, uh, the answer to that is that key phrase, right? Before the foundation of the world. So what do we know that happened before the foundation? Of that? that means before the all of creation, what do we know? Jesus was the Lamb of God slain from before the foundation of the world. That means the plan of redemption was in place in the mind of God, even before God created Adam. The book of life was written before the foundation of the world. So even the book of life was there 
before Adam was created. Is that okay, Charles? Okay, uh, Matthew 25. A kingdom was prepared before the foundation of the world. So God already planned that he would have his, son, his sons and daughters be part of his kingdom as heirs and joint heirs even before the foundation of the world. So all, all this was determined before Adam was created. Okay, let's, uh, Samuel will do the last question, I think. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor. Um, so it's my thoughts are a little scrambled. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, come up with a question. Um, but it's around uh, around uh, the idea of making sense of suffering, mm. uh, which is what I feel we are trying to do. <clears throat> um, and uh, for those of us who can make sense, you know, uh, uh, like all of this, which is suffering was not God's intention, and and it's temporary, and uh, we have an eternal. Uh, you know, I think that that understanding, that making sense, is powerful, and uh, and it's you know, and uh, when I go through suffering, I can I can rely to some extent on my understanding. But again, you know, when suffering is personal, it's it's hard to say. Uh, people lose all rational, but um, but there is some comfort in in uh, understanding. Uh, the whole aspect of suffering and and mm. being eternally hopeful on God, um, but uh, you know, considering same uh, aging, age, aging, and dementia, or or even young infants uh, who suffer but don't have that understanding, like they, they, and it's hard to explain to them. Was like, you know, uh, so I, I mean. So I, I think that I guess that two kinds of suffering. One is like, let's say I as someone I I can I I even though I'm I'm not physically experiencing any pain, but seeing my uh, child suffer or seeing my aging parents suffer, I partake in the suffering. But what consoles me is you know my understanding of suffering. Mm. Uh, but for the child or for the aging parents who've kind of lost that understanding. Maybe because of their pain, you know, or, or because of their mental threshold. Uh, it's it's how you know. Uh, so I'm just kind of trying to look at from that angle, like what I mean. You know, I as a watcher, a bystander, can make sense, and even though I feel the pain, I I, I take comfort in this knowledge of something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but my infant child or my aging parent, I'm not able to transfer that. So that's another level of suffering, uh, not being able to transfer the same understanding that I have to them and then watching them. And like, um, so, so, you know, like I, I, I'm reminded of Proverbs 18, 14, which says uh, man's will sustains uh, him during Ill his illness, but who can con console a crushed spirit? So it's, um, I'm just reminded, especially when talking about aging parents, you know, when somebody's kind of given up on life uh, because it's been too much, like 70 years, 80 years, and like five, the last five years, you're just dragging on. You know that, you know, your time is up, but you, you can't make sense. So how, how do you, how do we, we kind of comfort them? And it's, it's so hard. It's so hard. So uh, any, any thoughts on that? Pastor? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, you, you have rightly stated that, Samuel. You know, uh, we are, you know, we are trying to get a biblical understanding of suffering. And, you know, we, we will go through these six points or so uh, and for us to understand uh, that. Uh, but then on the other side uh, is, you know, the reality that uh, individuals, people are going through things that um, that are very painful. And uh, how how do we, you know, minister to them? How do we help them? And um, uh, you know, and Sometimes uh, 
let, let me say this. One is, you know, uh, as believers, of course, we have this understanding, like you said, hey, everything's going to be okay in the future. You know, uh, eventually we all have to die. And uh, for those of us who believe, it's going to be, we know everything is fine in heaven and also in all that God has planned beyond. So we know that, and that's our consolation, and that's our hope. But then here on earth, how do we help people, right? Practically, and uh, and I just, you know, um, one is just to be there with people. You know, just being there with people. Uh, I don't know whether I shared it with this class or maybe the second year, so please forgive me. If I'm repeating something, just tell me I already said it, okay? Uh, sometimes I forget which class I said what, but anyway. Um, so I think I shared with the second years, but I, sorry, you are the second years, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, Pastor, but uh, it would be uh, great which to class. hear again. <laughs> I don't know which class I was talking about. But anyway, you know, I, I, I think I shared it with you our first years, I don't know. Um, see, recently um, in, the, in the church, yeah, there was a couple that lost their five month five month baby okay it just happened i would say now it's like a few weeks few weeks back so and it was so sudden okay um uh, <clears throat> i think on thursday morning they messaged me saying okay you know they had to take the baby to the doctor uh, and uh, Okay, and you know, I was in class and all that, and uh, after the classes, I responded to them. Uh, then I called the, and this is a young couple, They've, this was the first child. And uh, so I called after class, I called and uh, prayed with them. And uh, so Friday, baby died. Okay, now this is five month old baby. Till Thursday, there was no indication of any problem from the time the baby was born. Okay. And uh, so basically what happened Thursday, the child, Thursday morning, the baby was gasping. And uh, so they took the baby to the hospital. Doctors were trying to find out what happened. Uh, you know, so it took a while, of course, you know, to do the tests and all that. And somewhere in Thursday evening, uh, the doctor comes and tells them the baby has a deformed heart and the baby should not have even lived five months. How did the baby live five months? And uh, did was there any indication before this? And they're like, you know, the parents are so shocked. They said, look, we have been going for all the checkups and everything. There was, they did all the checkup five months. There was no indication. Thursday evening is when they get this news and uh, the doctors are saying, we don't know, you know, uh, we don't know what to do or whatever. But before anything can be done, Friday morning, baby's gone. Okay. And the funeral happens Saturday. Now, what can you tell a couple like this? You no, know, and you know, we went, we, yeah, we, we, it was, it was on Saturday. So we did the funeral. And uh, the only thing at that funeral I could say was, you know, we don't have answers, but the baby is with Jesus. But even saying baby is with Jesus cannot console the family. I mean, the two young people. So, and of course, the boy's mother, the girl's parents, boy's mother, all there. Then, you know, I, 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 it, it, it just, it was like unbearable. Like, you, what can you say? Like, what words are you going to say? 
you know and uh, even before they could realize the baby's gone you know and then uh, uh, yeah I, I knew this whole this whole, all of this pain there but uh, so I just told you know the young man I said see uh, just let me know I mean right now things are all a lot of things happening and funeral and then paperwork and all those things happening just let me know uh, I'd like to come and spend some time with you but let me know whether you want to come to your house you want to do a call online you know whatever's comfortable for you and when you know and my intent was not to go and give any theology my intent was just be there you know, uh, because you know, in a, in a, in a situation, this you can't say anything. I mean, yeah, you know, we 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 have all this theology, we have all these chapter and verse, and we all know that, you know, uh, uh, the baby's with Jesus, and uh, it is a, yeah, it is we know that. But the pain, what words can we give? And uh, so eventually. Yeah, on Monday we did a call, so they said, you know, we, we just talk to you on the on a call, and it's okay. So we did a Zoom call. So the the young couple and the boy's mother were there on the call, and for two hours, I just listened. And for two hours, nonstop. The boy was saying, why did this happen? You know, if you are, that was it. Why did this happen? Where was God? If God is God, why didn't he do anything? It, it was you know, for two hours. And I, I know, can you, I just sat and I just listened on a Zoom call. And he just, then I knew that, look, he just had to express his heart. He just had to, you know, this is the pain that's in him, right? Uh, you know, words can't even express what the couple is going through. It was so sudden. There was no indication it was going to happen. Within three days, what, what they had as a healthy baby in their arms had to be laid in the ground, lifeless, and uh, it was it was so shocking. Now, um, and, and they were devastated. And then um, after, uh, so then I, I offered them to. You know, I wanted to just make myself available to for them to talk, but they don't. They just said, you know, we don't want to talk. And so then I did another call separately with the mother. She poured out her heart. Mother means the boy's mother. Uh, for her. And she she is okay in a better place spiritually. Uh, so she was, you know, she consoled herself with this fact that you know God is good, and uh, you know yeah, he's you know he's he'll work out his plans. So so that that she was able to console herself with that. But other than that, you know, this this was like a very devastating situation. So I'm just sharing that with you. Then that uh, this is what it is, you know. Uh, even among God's people, there is these things happen. And uh, what do you do? The first thing is you just have to be there for them. And it's not like what words we can say, but it's like, look, I, I'm available. I want to journey with you through this pain not because i have the answers now theologically yeah i can say it was because of the bondage of corruption and you know um, the baby's heart was deformed god didn't create it deformed and uh, god uh, god's that you know this is not god's best and uh, uh, theologically i have I, I mean i can i have all the chapter and verses and i can understand it but that's not what you say at that moment. You know, at that moment, you just have to be there. 
for the mother who was in a little different was in a different place spiritually yeah you know i could talk a little bit more and i could we could have conversation and then she had some questions and i could respond to those questions and so on but for this young couple no it was just you just have to be there and you know let 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 god work that out over time and it's not going to go away any fast it's not it's not a thing that's you know going to go away. it's 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 god has to work in their hearts over time and then second thing is so to answer your question one is we just have to be there with them journey with them second is we have to speak speak few words when they are able to receive right so that's where we have to be very careful right uh, like like i mentioned in the mother's case she was in a better place spiritually so and she had specific questions and i could just speak towards those questions help her through so you speak but speak few words and speak to what they are expressing as their need you know not uh, you know I, I can't do this apology class on suffering with them that's 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 not the time to do it you know it's uh, it's more that look we have to be there and just journey with them through this and um, you know and, and let god god do the work ultimately yeah so uh, sorry it took a long time to answer your question but that's that's the other side of uh, you know of of caring for people uh, uh, you know learning theology and understanding scripture is one thing but in real life uh, the way we journey with people is is different yeah is that okay or yeah Thank you, boss. Okay. All right. So, yeah, it's it's, it's good that we're having this discussion uh, because there is this other side, where, I mean, the reality that what people experience, and uh, we have to, with love and with grace, journey with people through various uh, various things in life. All right. So let me just. Uh, Make some progress on the content here. Number four. All right. Uh, then the fourth reason for suffering, uh, which we is uh, which we can recognize, is that there's pain that is caused due to other people's actions, including persecution. Right. Uh, so. Peter, and could somebody read that for us? First Peter chapter one, verse five through nine. First Peter one, five through nine. Somebody could read that for us, please. I could read. Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay. So now Peter uh, is speaking or is writing to the Jews, many Jewish believers who've been scattered um, around you know what we refer to as Asia Minor, basically from Jerusalem, they've been scattered around uh, through that region, which in modern day is parts of Turkey, Syria, Lebanon. Uh, you know, in that whole region, they've been scattered, and so he's writing to them. And they, 
these believers were facing a lot of persecution, meaning people, they were being affected by, or they're being attacked in various ways by people around them. And so he's addressing them, addressing the Jewish believers. And, and he's telling them, look, right now, you're grieved, you're troubled, verse six. It says, you're troubled with various trials. You're going through so many things, so many hardships. But it, what is it doing? It's, it's proving the genuineness of your faith. So in their case, it was really uh, hardships that they were going through because of their faith in Christ. They had been scattered throughout this region. Many of them had been displaced from their hometowns and families. And, and their faith was, was being proved. So Peter is saying, look, you're going through hardships, but this is a proof of your the genuineness of your faith, and you will receive your reward. And you, you are going to be able to rejoice with joy, uh, inexpressible and full of glory uh, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's looking forward to that. But the point is that uh, th there is a lot of suffering that's happening because of other people's actions, right? And then in Peter's epistle, he actually mentions the different kinds of suffering these people are going through you know and 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 i've just summarized it here uh, you know they are suffering wrongfully in the workplace uh, they are suffering uh, they're being accused uh, even though they're uh, they're falsely accused for good conduct then of course there's a suffering against sin they're trying to live holy uh, they are suffering as a christian or because of them being christians um, he tells them not to, you know, suffer but for their own actions. I mean, they say, "Hey, just keep doing right. Don't, don't, don't under pressure end up doing something wrong." And then there's even suffering because of the adversary, you know. And Peter is outlining all these things in one episode. Can you imagine? So, in one episode, the apostle Peter is addressing these different kinds of suffering that these people are going through. And, and a lot of them is because of what is happening to them by people, right? Whether it's you know, in their workplace, uh, you know, being accused of their conduct or suffering because they're Christian uh, or suffering. Uh, these, these are things being done by people. Uh, against sin is, of course, our desire to live holy and against the en enemies because we are standing and fighting against, uh, you know, uh, what the enemy is doing. So, and all of this is addressed in just one episode, Peter's uh, first episode. So keep in mind that there are times when we will suffer or we face suffering, face hardships, we face pain because of what people are doing wrongfully. You know, uh, just yesterday I was, uh, I was met, I was meeting or met, um, uh, one of the businessmen in our church, and, uh, and God has blessed him so much. Uh, it's wonderful, everything's going on, wonderful. But right now, he is facing problems from former employees, but not a few of, the, of his former employees, who are actually Christian. And uh, you know they are out. They've, they're no longer with the with the company, but they are filing cases against him for things he has not done. And he told me, you know, when uh, one one of his men had gone to the police station, the policeman said, "You see, you Christians, you are saying be kind, be gentle to each other, and the policeman is telling his, his representative saying, look." Two years ago, I told you to put those people in jail. But you were saying, no, we are Christians. We will be kind and all that. And look what your kindness is doing. Those same people are troubling you like this. And this is an unsaved policeman watching this thing happening between, you know, supposedly these two Christian, you know, and, and this this little Christ, few Christians have got, the God, I mean, he knows they're Christians. And, they are fighting against it and putting all cases in. And so, and of course, you know, in prayer, we're standing with him. But 
just as an example where it's very sad that Christians are causing problems for other Christians. You know, and now they're not Christians in the sense of being believers. They're just namesake Christians. These people are filing all these false allegations and cases and all that. But to the outside world, to the policeman and the, the, the you know, these people who are involved in all of this, they're looking at it and saying, what's going on here? You know, and, uh, uh, but the whole problem is caused by people. You know, uh, and it's it's all a workplace related situation. So I was just mentioning it, um, and so sometimes, you know, uh, problems that we face are caused. Uh, you know, some of the problems we're facing are caused by other people who are troubling us. Okay, I, I just realized I have gone into the break time. Okay, let me pause here. Sorry, it's nine fifty five. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's pause here um, because I already went into the break time. Uh, we'll take 10 minutes from now. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue from where I paused and I'll also see Christopher's question. Christopher, we will uh, pick up your question right after we come back from the break. Okay. All right. Let's uh, take a quick break and we'll be back. Thank you. <laughs> 